Hello, everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope my voice is coming good and clear. Please invite your friends and share the link with everybody. Maybe this uh, topic is not interesting because people like fighting and argument, and they like action and etc. And for me, I don't really care who like what and what they like or what. I mean, I do what I think it's right. Uh, today, our topic is about one verse in the Bible, which is very important. And I'm not saying that this verse is more important than the others, but I'm saying that every verse in the Bible is meant for a reason. And this specific verse will help all of us to be a better human being. Before we speak about it, you know, I would like to ask people before after we finish uh, to leave a, a comment in the comment section and tell us what do you think? I mean, what is the most uh, verse in the Bible have a touch with you? Uh, you know, we have always a problem and the problem is uh, we don't understand what we want from life. I mean, actually, I'm going to have a, a soon uh, in September 12, a video in the other channel, which is uh, called uh, the purpose of life. What is your purpose of life? I mean, why, why we are here, what, what we want. So uh, in that channel, I will speak about the, this issue and we will discuss it more in deep. Uh, but there is things always, you know, in life, we do and sometimes we are just people who live I mean we don't know really why we live why we are here what for what we want to do uh, what exactly the purpose of me and this is what I'm going to talk about in my other channel in this video here how to find the, your purpose of life and today this video is really in too much in connection with the other video we will speak about if you see in this uh, coming video which we will do in uh, two days from now I chose this picture because this picture is really uh, it's telling me a lot of things. I mean, sometimes you see things, but you don't notice how much uh, how much stories there is in that picture. A person he have a back and he is saying anything. Hungry helps. He is tired. He is sleepy. He is. I mean, this person look like he is totally destroyed. But you will notice even though he is destroyed he have hope that help will come help will come even though he have a very miserable miserable time still he think hope is coming or let us say help is coming because help and hope is the same he is angry yes but he is hungry for help, not only for food. Many of us, we are left alone in this life, or we think we are left alone. Or maybe we are really left alone. Some of us, we suffer. Um, maybe we get upset. We have a family, they don't care for us. We have even maybe a mother who don't, I don't feel like she loves me. Or a father, he don't care of me. Or maybe I am a, a child who was born and my dad, he left me when I was a kid, maybe. And he never maybe called to ask, how are you? Maybe I feel I'm lonely in this earth. I find myself a lonely soul. I don't have a friends. I don't have anyone. Hunger is not only for food. Hunger is for many things. Suffering is one of the things we all human beings, we share. It doesn't matter who you are, rich, poor, but for sure, everyone his suffering is different. When you have, a, when you are poor, that bring misery of being poor, additional to normal suffering, which means we have a normal suffering, but now you have extra stress. You are being poor, even your food you cannot afford. Even to have a shelter, to have a roof like everybody, you know, the, the, the bird have a nest. Even a bird, he can have a nest easy, but this poor person, he cannot have a nest. So how we can survive this life and how we can be better, how we can live better? This is what will be the topic of this video, which will be in the other channel. I will post the link for you for those who like to subscribe. 
and they can join us. However, today our topic is not far from that topic. Let us say they complete each other. This is the link for those who like to join us later. So what is really needed for our life? How we can have a better quality? How we can enjoy our life? How we can be something useful in life? How we can be useful for ourselves? You see, there is a lot of people who live um, and they have a target for sure. There are some people don't have target. I mean, they just wake up in the morning, eat, sleep, drink, snore, take a shower, watch a movie. I mean, their life is like, just live, you know, live, live. You know, there's many people that say to you, live and let other people live, you know, live and li let and live and let live. But I don't think this is really what we are. Otherwise, we are just uh, animals, you know, programmed to do things. I will go to a verse in the Bible and we are going to view it together. Uh, my friend, don't change the topic now. The one who's asking me a question about uh, other religion. Today, our topic is about Christianity and Christianity only. <clears throat> this verse in the Bible, which is no question, is God using the mouth of the apostle of Jesus, speaking amazing wisdom. If I shall speak with every human, you know, I want people to focus with me here and to be deep and don't be disturbed by the, by the text. Maybe it's better even to, to slow down in the text so you, so you can read and enjoy this. I cannot be a person who speaks the language of a human being and even the language of uh, angels, but I don't have love. Okay, who I am then? So... I speak the language of angels, but I don't have love. I will be like a, a bell who make a very bad noise. That's all. I'm just like a loudy voice. With the language I speak, even though maybe I'm proud, I speak languages. Maybe I can even make better speech than you. But still, my speech is empty because there's no love in the speech. You know, when somebody's speaking to people from the ground of love, it's totally different from somebody speaking to them because he is doing business. We saw how many people, they go and they make speeches, including Christians who claim to be Christians. They go to the church and they tell you even before they go, oh, if you, I'm, I'm going, you have to reserve for me a hotel. Uh, it have to be five stars and I charge etc money a lot of money because simply he is not coming base of love he is coming base of business this is a, this is a businessman he claimed to be a Christian minister but he is a businessman a person who have love he will be happy to come and he will do what he do for free now, for sure, you can help him to cover his uh, cost to come and fly, etc. But why he's charging you? Because simply he don't have love. And that goes for anything in life. People, they give you speeches. I'm going to help you. I'm your friend. But when you need them, they are not there. Why? Because they are just loudy noise, like a sound of a bell in the wrong time. You hear them? when you do not need them and when you need them they are not there maybe I am a prophet who prophesy I stand between the crowd and say hey I'm a prophet I'm going to tell you about God I make big speeches and I know a lot of knowledge I know mystery I know things you do not know you will be amazed if you listen to me but then after all of this All the wisdom I have, all the knowledge I have, even I have faith which can move mountains. 
Imagine how much power is that. But I have no love on me. I would be nothing. A person who speaks too much say amazing stuff, not stupidity, is wise, is powerful. He has faith, is a believer. His faith can move mountains, but yet he has no love. So what this is all is about? It's like a programmed creature. It's like somebody, he took a, a drink of energy, and now his body is full of energy, but the energy is wasted because it's not targeting love. And if I should feed everything that I have to poor, even that, I will give my money to the poor. I will feed all the poor. And if I had, or uh, uh, if I hand over my body to be burned up, to, I want to sacrifice myself to everybody. But I have no love on me. I gain nothing. So there's some people, they do that just to be proud. I'm a hero. There's people here that are desperately trying to fight to be a hero. They are not really in love with you to defend you or to sacrifice for you, but they love the title. The title of being a hero. I sacrificed for you. You will hear someone from your family saying to you, I work all my life to pay for your school. Hmm. Because simply, he is not speaking based on love. He's speaking, he was doing what he's doing, so one day he will say that to you. So one day you will return it back. So one day you will say to you, okay, you know, do you know that the degree you have, I am the one who paid for it? There's no love. And that will explain in the line after. Love is patient and sweet. Look how beautiful is that. Somebody, he says to you, I love you but he cannot even handle your mistake for little tiny one and he's screaming your face where is your love you know sometimes we we hear jokes like a guy he just get married and his wife she fell down in the in the night of the wedding and he said to her honey did you are you hurt are you okay uh, you know, like okay, it's like so, it's like he's a better fly flying all over her to see if she is okay. Five months after his wife, she fell down. He said, "What's wrong with you? Are you blind?" Because he did not have love. He had nothing to do with love. His love was nothing but a desire for something. Suddenly. He don't want to see if you are okay or not. What happened? He is not sweet no more. He is not patient no more. For that was not a love. Love is not something temporarily and does not change. Other religion, they teach the opposite. Even though I don't like to quote verses from different books, but you will notice that other religion, and specifically like Islam, teach 100 degree opposite from what we are reading. Somebody saying, not everyone perfect. Who said I'm perfect? Nobody is perfect, including me. So, Mega, I don't, I don't know what. What do you mean? Not everyone is perfect, but none of us is perfect. Love is the perfect. See, if I am a person who insists to be with the side of love, love will protect me. 
Love is the perfection, not me. Let us make it this way. If I'm a person who is doing everything I do based on love, then that will be my guideline. That will protect me. It's like I'm driving in the highway, but I do not know really the direction. But I am taking one guideline. It's called love. So wherever love takes me, I will go. Then I am protected. Otherwise, I am not a perfect person. I've never been and I will never be. The second you are a person who go about what love can make decision for you. You know, we don't want to go far. I mean, your family, maybe you are married, you are single, I don't know. You're, you're, maybe you are a mother, maybe you are a father. Maybe you have a sister, maybe you have cousins, maybe you have a friends, maybe you have, maybe, maybe, maybe. If you do decide, decide to do everything based on love to others, then you are always in the right direction. It's not you who is perfect. It is the decision of being in the side of love, being loving. That will make you a different person. Otherwise, you are not perfect, as you said. So the perfect is love, not you. Love is patient and sweet. What does that mean? Will have an impact. Love will have an impact. You are in the bus, you see a woman, she is, you know, struggling to stand. Or an old woman, or a woman, she have a baby. And what do you do? You sit, you watch, selfish, or you share your love. You stand up and you give her your seat. That's sweet. You don't have to. Nobody is forcing you. But because you have a guideline, it's called love. Your love made you stand up for a woman, even you do not know her name. You never saw her before. And she maybe she would not even say thank you, and maybe she would be rude to you. But love is a sweet. Because the second you give your love, you feel different. Inside you, you have a joy. Love is sweet. Love does not envy. How many people they suffer every day from envy? Either people they, they feel that people they envy them or they envy others. Envy have many meanings. One of them is jealousy, and the jealousy can be positive or negative, but most of the jealousy are negative. As an example, I can be jealous for God, which means I want to be a warrior, I want to serve Him, I want to serve others. That is a good jealousy. But there's a jealousy of being selfish, of being an owner of something. Like you, you love a woman, or a woman, she loves you, and then anyone speak to you, anyone say hi, she started questioning your behavior, because she wants to own you, or he, the man, he wants to own that woman. You cannot talk to anyone. His jealousy, which is not good one, is controlling him. He don't really love you. He likes to own you. He think by saying to you, you are my wife and I'm your husband, it's like you are a property. And now you don't have any freedom to talk to anyone. And because he don't, obviously he don't trust you. He have an envy. He have jealousy. So love does not envy. And that should be from both direction. Love is not upset neither. Uh, let us say we can translate this word as uh, rude. <clears throat> or let us say uh, doesn't go up right away. Like you know, there's some people they they think they they, they cry so fast. They get angry so fast, and they think because they love, they cry. No, this is just emotion. This is just emotion. It's just temporarily. Love 
is let us say um, like a a, 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 a constant. You know, I hope I, I wish my English can help me better, but like it's a constant wave. It's not crazy. It's not dead. It's not slow. It's not fast. It is something consistent. It's always continuing the same line. It's like a beautiful voice speaking to you, and that voice always is sweet. It doesn't go loud. It doesn't go so low, so you struggle to, to hear it. It is always very relaxing. That is love. Love does not take notes of bad things. What does that mean? <clears throat> you do something bad to me. And then each time we talk, I say, do you remember what you did to me? Do you remember what you did? You know, it's okay. Well, are we going to go over this or not? No, we will not. Because we are not practicing love. Love is always come with forgiveness. This is why when they ask the Lord how to pray, the major thing in the prayer, our Father out of heaven is, forgive to us the same we forgive to others. Just forgive. Forgive based on love. He did wrong. Well, you do wrong too. If you want to be forgiven, forgive. Do you think you are the person who did not wrong to this person and that person? Maybe not this the same person, but you always, you know, obviously all of us, we do wrong. So love always brings forgiveness and will not take notes. And then after 10 years from now, I will remind you what you did to me. But I thought you forgive me. I thought you we are okay. I thought you uh, love me. I thought, no, 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 no. Love and somebody taking notes, they don't match. And this is a true love. Love will never be happy for something evil. And love will never seek its own. Like I say, you are a person who love, but you seek your own benefit, you know. You have a benefit from this love. It's not really a love. Like let us say, uh, you have an old uh, member in the family. You want to take care of him because you are hoping that one day he will write his inheritance in your name. That is not love. That's you are seeking something different. Yes, maybe you are doing something sound like right now is good. You are taking care of an old person, but your intention is totally something else. Let us say you have an old member in the family, grandfather. He's rich. He have a property or whatever he have. Imagine you love your grandfather. <clears throat> But in your heart, you wish that he will die soon so you can inherit him. Where is the love? So you hear the news that this person, he died, even though he is your grandfather, and you should be sad for it. But no, you are happy now. So love does not or does not enjoy bad things, bad news, or evil stuff. That is not love. Tomorrow is going to be uh, September 11. We remember people, they were dancing in the street. <clears throat> that because they have nothing but hate inside their heart. People are burning alive. And then there are some people dancing and happy. That is not love. Love for what? Love for death and suffering? That is love for evil. Love always do not rejoice for evil but rejoice in truth. This is something we have always uh, to remember that if we have love in our heart, we should not rejoice for something not right. As an example, 
I am a child. I go to the neighbor backyard. I steal their apples. I come back to my mom. So what my mom she would do now? Rejoice because her son he come with a bunch of apples, or she will rebuke me and say, "Shame on you, son! You made me ashamed of having you." I'm not proud to have a son like you. If you do that again, I will be really, really upset. And now go and take those apples back to the neighbor. How many of us will rejoice for something not right? Something is wrong. Just because we get the benefit of it. Do you know what I mean, guys? Yeah, do you understand what I'm saying? something is not mine just because I have it for free or got, got the opportunity to have it you know I rejoice but this is not right this is absolutely not right wrong is wrong so how you can rejoice wrong so always we have to make decision based on love which is the kind which does not rejoice evil anything is evil and you be happy for it that's mean there's something wrong with you you have uh, to do a checkup uh, we go to doctor to do a checkup you, know, you have to do it this time by yourself I mean why I'm rejoicing for something evil I just saw in the news more than 100 people get killed in Iraq Today, the Muslims, the Shia, they are celebrating what's called the Ashura. I'm not going to rejoice for this. This is evil. I feel sad for them. I feel sad for every single one of them. They have family, they have children, they have wives, they have, you know, I mean, this is sad. How a human being can rejoice for something evil? Someone saying, <clears throat> How to love your enemy? Well, I don't know. Uh, I practice that every day. Did you see me losing my patient? Every day I go on, uh, online. People make videos making fun of me, attacking me, calling me names, sending me death threat, you name it. I'm here. Love your enemy. Because I love my enemy, I want to save them. I am consistent in my message. <clears throat> I never changed. I want to save the Muslims. With all the danger would that come with? I mean, do you can you imagine how much danger I have in because of what I do? So how you can love your enemy? Actually, I think it's very easy to love your enemy. In the same time, it's very hard. Depends who you are. <clears throat> if you are a person who, uh, you know, uh, hold notes. Let us go back to notes. <clears throat> when somebody make you upset, and you take a note of this upset, and then you keep remembering, remembering, remembering. Then you will never forgive. And you will never forget. And that will be painful for you. And maybe the others even don't even feel what are you talking about. Or or the one who make you upset or the one who insulted you, he's gone. Maybe he is history now. But because inside you, you cannot forget. You are upset from what happened to you. Then you will be suffering for the rest of your life. So you see, love here give you other opportunity to enjoy life. Suffering will not continue with you because life comes with suffering. If you don't want to forgive, if you don't want to forget, if you don't want not to be upset okay I get upset we are a human we get upset for the moment 
like sometimes I get upset from uh, people debating me lying to me but it's okay it's fine because why I'm expecting them to be honest they are deceived they are misleaded and this is one of the symptoms of being misleaded so I'm why I'm expecting the other to be healthy when I am supposedly here to help him you know what I mean it's like you are a doctor <clears throat> and let us say you are a dentist and then you are upset because the guy who opened his mouth his mouth look ugly I mean like hello he is there because his mouth is I <laughs> need help you know what I mean because his mouth need help he is there coming to you he is not there to open his mouth to show you how beautiful his mouth is no he, he is there to show you how ugly his mouth is so always we have to use love as a guideline for what we do and what we say we have a lady here she is trying to change our topic her name is Melissa she is saying she chose Islam okay so what I can do for you Melissa you chose Islam okay but I don't want to change the topic but according to Islam this is a destiny you are a Muslim because Allah he wrote your destiny before he made you so I find it very silly and showing the ignorance of people about their own cult I'm not going to change the topic but just to give you how love work in Christianity and how Islam function in a very awkward way this is just for Melissa <clears throat> read with me Melissa and try not to laugh at your choice This is a child who is an infant and he died. Aisha, she said to Muhammad, this child, he is going to be in heaven for he commit no sin. He commit no sin. Neither he reach even the age of sin. Muhammad, he said to her, no, because this is not how it works in Islam. He said to her, I shall appear adventure. It might be the otherwise, which means he might go to hell. But he did not commit sin. So Aisha, according to Islam, it's written for you already. You will go to hell or to heaven. And it's a destiny. So you choose nothing. This is how I find this cult is very silly. It's out of wisdom. It's a fabric which is made from tissue. The second you touch water, it disappears. It tripped off and we just put some water in this hadith and we saw how silly that is a child he is an infant who died from a famous family yet he might go to hell why because it's a destiny it's not a choice so why you are saying I choose Allah he created this child and he decide where he will be when he was in the backbone of his father do you see it we don't do believe such a madness so don't say again I choose you are being deceived Muslim don't choose anything you are just suffering from belief it's called fake destiny I call it madness welcome Melissa and you can share with us and you can stay now we go back to our topic in Christianity we don't believe in this in Christianity we believe that we have to make a choice and heaven is for those who make a choice to be with the Lord not a destiny before you are created as Muhammad said that is a false teaching if you look with me here the Bible says The Bible 
speaking about not rejoicing evil, but rejoicing the truth. Uh, right now, we just rejoice the truth with our sister Melissa. And the truth is that the teaching she learned cannot be from God. Because if I am going to go to hell, even yet I am a baby, I just born for no sin. I mean, what is justice? I thought people they go to heaven or hell because of their fruits and then we find that this is not true it's a decision made before you are created so how this is can be from God and where is justice love here will bring us to different level which Muslims they don't see we as a Christians, I, I, I just said, I heard the news that in uh, in Iraq, there's tens of people died celebrating Ashura. They stopped in the top of each other. I said, this is very sad for me because I don't rejoice evil. But other cults, they make you rejoice evil. Let us continue in our topic. Rejoice not evil, but rejoice the truth. There is many that are hypocrites. Uh, DK, if you repeat this question one more time, I'm going to block you because this is a topic different from our topic. And obviously you will never stop. This is last warning for you, DK. I mean, what the name of the Quran now have to do with our topic? Are you ill? Like, are you going to die if you wait until tomorrow? We go live on air and you ask me the same question? That's it? You want now the answer? Are you in the, like, uh, uh, special care unit? <laughs> What's wrong with people? Okay, Melissa, we will ignore you because obviously you are coming here just to disturb us. You are not coming here to listen. Your prophet, he says, women are half a brain. I mean, how 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 you accept Islam and a prophet, he say that you are half a brain. I don't know. My God, he don't say that about women. My, my Messiah, he said, he and she, they will be the same. They will be equal. They will be the same as angels, which means my reward in heaven will be the same as your reward in heaven. I will not be better than you. That is my Lord. While in heaven, you, you will be one of many in the bed of a one man. And Allah will create tons of women just for entertainment. You are one of them. So enjoy your cult. Going back to our topic. One of the most beautiful things where we see in this uh, uh, chapter, love never fails. Love never fails. Even if the target you wanted to do was not successful, still you are successful. I will explain to you. Because you see, fail, what is fail? Let us say I wanted to help somebody. I did my best, but at the end, it doesn't really do much. Still, I did not fail. Doing the love act itself is a success. The result is not in my hand. Speaking to Muslims, thousands, they accept the Messiah and they are saved. And millions, they refuse. I did not fail. Thank you, Lord. I'm very successful. Do you understand what I'm saying, guys? Do we understand what we are saying? Guys, forget about militia and for, focus with us, please. Focus. You see, somebody trying to disturb you. This is the whole point. The devil trying to disturb you so you don't listen.
That's the whole point. Do you think those people are really, they care what we are talking about? They want to disturb you. So you will not listen to the message of love. Message of love hurt many. This is why Jesus was putting in the cross. Because he said things nobody would say. Love your enemy. Love destroy evil. The evil inside them will make them unhappy. What love? What are you talking about? Let us go and kill and attack and do. That will make people excited. Go today and see how many people want to watch an action movie full of blood. Almost everybody. Almost everybody want to see John Wick shooting everybody. John Wick is sick. John Wick is an example how to make you an evil person without knowing. And I'm not talking about the actor. I'm talking about the act. They bring you a guy who is a, 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 he do for living assassination. This is what they do for a living. And they make you live the act. And he is your hero. I want to watch John Wick. Like I, I heard many people saying John Wick, John Wick. I said, okay, what is this John Wick? Let me see. And I was shocked with the story. I mean, this guy is disgusting. In the old days, they used to show you a guy, he come and he saved the poor. Like even in the cowboy movie. A good guy, he go after the bad guys. No, today no. Today is the cool guy, is the one who rob a bank. Is the one who is a thief. A mission impossible. The one who go in, uh, in uh, 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 like a casino and he steal the money. This is the cool guy these days. And they wonder why crimes are increasing. And why everybody is killing everybody. So, if we really are people of love, then we should stay from anything teach us to be evil and to be violent. I will never be, I will never be evil or violent to anyone as a Muslim or an atheist or anything. We have to be careful because everything around us and this earth are trying to take us away from love. Love which never fail. We are reading from the first Corinthians chapter 13. And this is the link if you like to open it in your computer so you can read it better. And then the message in front of us, maybe our prophet who have a gift of a prophecy, you prophesy for God. And I'm not saying I am or you are. I'm saying maybe in the, you know, like maybe you are. Maybe he is. All the skills which our gifts was given from God to you, to be a prophet, to speak in tongues. The knowledge which has been given to you. Everything you have is going to be nothing equal to nothing if you don't have love when I was a child I was speaking as a child and I think as a child and I understand as a child but now now I'm a growing man or woman and I am over with the times of being a child. 
But let us stop here. I met a lot of people, they never grow up and they are still children. They have a body of a growing woman or man, but in fact they are just a bunch of kids. Your behavior explain it. You got a phone six months ago. A new phone come. But the new phone is the same as the old phone. I mean, what the difference? You spend all the money you save to buy a stupid phone. Well, the phone is in your hand is working because you are a child. You cannot resist temptation. And temptation goes for anything, anything around us. The child inside you, which is just a kid, he likes to hold things. Like you give him a Barbie, he will not share it with the other kid because he will cry if somebody, you know, you buy him a toy, he play with it for five minutes, he throw it away. But if another kid, he grab it, he will go crazy for it. That is the child inside us. Because this child, he don't understand, you know. He have a fear that somebody is taking his stuff. And many of us, we grow old, but we are still children. Still we think as a child, and we act as a child, and we are not yet out of the age of being a child. And many of you are married to a children's, not in the age, but in the behavior. You might be married to a man, he's a growing man, he have a beard, but he's just a kid. He do things he do not know why, just he like it. You know, you have no idea why I'm doing this. Or a woman, she is she have an obsession. She want to buy an expensive purse. Okay, why you want to buy the expensive? Your husband, he make $2,000 a month or maybe $500 a month. Why you want to spend maybe half of his salary in a stupid purse? Because she is a child. She is not a growing adult. So we grow up by body, but still we act like children. And that should stop. There is good thing about being a child is to be, let us say, honest. Keep that part of you when you grow up. But when you grow up and you became a mature person, women or men, You look at the mirror and you find that you have what I see in the mirror. What happened to me? The mirror is your image. But the mirror here is not about just seeing a face. The mirror inside you what is inside you what you did what you accomplish here we go now you you yesterday you were a child today you are a man you are a woman what you did everything you do or you did is going to be examined by the last verse we see in the screen for there are these three things that endure faith hope and love but the greatest of these is love because faith you know you have faith in Jesus but you don't have love to others I mean what kind of uh, Christian you are you have hope of salvation but only for you not for others you are selfish you don't know what love means. You do not know what faith means. You do not know that destroy everything you have. The greatest of the three gifts, the faith and the hope and love is love because love contain both of them. Let us say love is the coat 
which will keep both warm your faith and your hope you see when somebody have a good heart we say like from time to time like we see somebody we say this guy he's a or this woman she have a good heart she's a good-hearted person what, what does that mean simply this person have love and his love based in faith a faith in what I will do good and it doesn't matter really if they like it or not I will do good maybe they will reject me maybe they will not be happy with me maybe they understood me wrong said I would do good I have hope and I have faith that my love will work so I do love and this is why we need love in our life you know because this is will change our life will make us happier nicer more beautiful in and out and even healthier you see one of the things uh, which destroy people li uh, life is being hateful because hate hate is like a poison will destroy you slowly and remember our God, our Lord Himself is love. For God, He loved the world, He sent His only begotten Son. What 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 for God love the world, all of us, black, African, Asian, white, it doesn't matter who you are. He loved the whole world. So based on love, God act. Based, based on love, God give. If you reject his love this is your business be free someone saying I have love but I have no money now my friend I don't like to talk about myself but I went through a very very hard time in my life still I love people and nothing changed and always God he ordered open doors for me I don't want to uh, give you a drama, but I went through a very harsh time in my life. But that did not change me to be a worse, to be no, but to be a better person. I did not hate the rich for his rich, and I am poor. I did not hate the one who is warm for I was cold. I did not hate the one who is his his stomach is full because my stomach is hungry. Still, I'm the same person. I understand how life works. So, if you cry for not having something, which is money, what about being happy for having what you have? I mean, you are poor, but very obviously you have internet. I mean, how many people in the world, they cannot afford even to have a faucet of water in their house? I saw people sleeping literally inside a tire in the street. You know what tire is? An old tire thrown by cars. They go inside the tire, children sleeping inside the tire. And here we need to learn the love of appreciation because appreciation is a gift of love. I love the Lord for he gave me what I have. Otherwise, it might go worse. It's like somebody he is saying, I am not lucky. Hmm? I'm not lucky. You want to see what unlucky mean? Go and look at other people people what what they have in their life then you will see that you are very lucky appreciation is one of the most beautiful things which is based on love can happen to us if you have a father who is a, a poor person you say you grow as a kid in a family poor family but your father is doing everything he can do do you hate him because he didn't he brought you in a, a poor family no he loves you and he did suffer to bring you the piece of a bread that is love my friend that bread is priceless actually i saw and i witness that those who they are born of a rich family they don't appreciate their parents 
not only that they became their enemies most of them not all you will see a child he grew up became a man oh my dad was a cheap oh my dad was ugly oh my dad no but your dad he paid for your school he gave you a nice house you use driving car and since the age of 15 but you don't appreciate because he was born and he found everything ready Did you notice that those who they come as immigrants to America, they do 100 times better than American? Do you know why? Because he's coming from a poor country where he don't see what he see here, so he appreciate every second he live in this country. American who was born in America, eh? so what if I ate a steak? So what if I drive a car? So what if I have a brand new jeans? I mean, it's just to get it for ten dollars. But in different countries, this is a dream. We have, we have to be careful. And if you are a person who is in a good, uh, let us say, you have a good worth, be careful with your children. Make them understand how to appreciate that what is coming is should not come easy. Easy come, easy go. If you spoil your children, they will be spoiled. This is what spoiled mean. You spoiled them. That's it. They became spoiled. We have to teach our children since a very early age to appreciate to appreciate the bread in the table not to throw it away to appreciate the food in the in the dish not to throw half of it and eat half of it I guess and uh, please there is no need to insult anyone and for uh, here we go I mean you see, a person come in the text, he said something, and now you guys, you cannot forget about what this person said. Just let it go. We did help that person, and we did our advice, and it's up to them. All right? Forget about this woman, Melissa. Can we? I will block you if you don't stop. Focus on the topic and get a benefit for you see I was hoping that we, today we will be able to help many to rethink about their lifestyle and the way they do things But look Someone he come he post little text in the chat and you, you guys are like just look waiting for something in the water You don't want to listen Anyone will use bad language, I will block you. The Satan is here. And he is examining your patient. Be nice to her. That will be helpful. How we are speaking about being loving and then we start calling people names. She needs your help, not your insult. Like what kind of doctor you will be? You see, always the devil, he examine you. He send you something to disturb you. And either you are smarter than the devil or he is smarter than you. Like some of us, we go to the church and then instead of being praying, we are watching what people are wearing. And then we start talking about what they are wearing. I look at this guy, what he is wearing. Look what this guy is doing. Look this woman she is talking, but you are talking too. So you claim that you are better than them, but you do what they do. Where is your love? So my friend, 
when the verse here speak about seeing seeing us in the mirror please see yourself in the mirror be honest with yourself and don't be afraid to admit your sin you see we as a Christians the Bible give us a great advices as an example to confess our sin sin confession is very important and we can confess not necessarily to a priest when you confess because the, the priest is just another another brother we confess our sin why because that means we are reviewing ourselves in the self mirror and trying to find my bad things and my good things and if there is something bad I confess that I did bad so I can fix it you see if you don't want to say and to see the bad things you did you will never change for being better let us say you are a married person but you are rude to your wife how many people they say bad words to their wife every day or how many women they say the same to their husbands what kind of disgusting life this life is what this marriage is about what about you stop for a second and ask yourself can I stop being a child can I be a man today speak like a man act like a man can I stop using the F word can I stop cursing people can I be loving can I be giving and see how that will come back to me I advise you all of you to read those this chapter first Corinthians chapter 13 because that I believe can even fix your marriage if you are married can fix your future if you are single and can teach you a great example of not to be selfishness or to suffer from selfishness you know one of the greatest disease we suffer from as a human is being selfish once they ask me if you want to marry a woman who should be I mean what kind of woman I first should first you should not be selfish I will never be married to a selfish woman because selfish women don't love anyone or selfish man don't love you he's selfish that's it he love himself that's not love that is evil the second you are a selfish person you are in the circle of evil because everything you do is based on you even if it's going to hurt others if you buy something you buy it because you like it not because the others they want it if you cook something you cook it because you like to eat it not because you want you are worried about if the, the rest they like it or not what kind of family would be this family This verse or this chapter is anti selfish, will make you a better human being for yourself first before others. After all bad words I hear from people speaking about me, I love uh, Muslims, they post <coughs> links saying, Christian Prince, we humiliated you. I love. I love I mean, how much you humiliated me more than Jesus they put him in the cross they took off his clothes they put nails in his hands and his feet and they put a crown ugly crown in his head but because of his beauty the beauty of love that the crown became a crown of love So for you know for them they think they are being victorious in fact your hate is killing you your hate is killing you this is why in the Middle East you cannot find one single community is happy everybody is angry because they rejoice you see what the Bible see here they rejoice what love does not 
rejoice evil, but rejoice the truth. The second you go in that category where you rejoice evil, you are one of that category. Even you call yourself a Christian. Never rejoice evil. Even it's for your enemy. Or the one who think he is your enemy. Life is amazing. Life is beautiful. And if you are really truthful, try to practice this chapter we see in front of us, starting from your family. If you cannot start, I mean, if you can practice this with your family, I mean, you can practice with whom? If you are a man and married and you cannot practice this chapter with your wife and your children, what kind of man you are? And why you are here? What, what, why you marry? Why you get married? Why you have children? What is the, what is the purpose? If you are a lady who is married and you have a children, but you cannot love your husband and you cannot be patient with him, why you married him? And why you fail? That's a failure. That's a big failure in your life. That's mean you accomplish really nothing. Imagine you are successful outside, you own a business or whatever career, but you cannot be successful with your kid and your, 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 your husband or your wife. How failure, how big the failure is. This is why it says here, love never fail. Because when you do love and practice love, even if the practice itself done and the result was not as you wish, still you are successful. Because inside you, you have nothing but love. You practice nothing but love and you wanted nothing but love, you are successful. As simple as that. <clears throat> Somebody is saying to me, what about reading chapter Matthew, chapter 5, verse number 39? But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slap you in the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek. I don't know why you, why you are, want me to talk about this one. But this is one of the wisdom of the Messiah. You see, in the old, in the old days, there is law. And the law... Uh, Maybe it's funny for you that law at that time. The Roman they have their own law. One of the uh, Roman law that if you hit somebody in his left cheek, he go to jail. Right cheek, he don't. So what Jesus is saying? Don't be evil like him. You are living. You are a civil being. This is not about Jesus saying to others, "Go and let them beat you," as many people they explain it to you. This is about being wise, smart, and not to do evil. So don't resist evil by evil. He did evil to you, you do evil to him. Well, there's a law. Let the law take its place. Somebody, he slammed your face, call the police. Okay, you beat him again, what will happen? Both of you will end in jail. You did evil, he did evil. Both of you are equal. Even though he is the one who started first. And no, we are talking about what? I'm talking about people who live in the same town, maybe neighbor, etc. Not about enemies whose army coming to attack you. This is a different story. <clears throat> the verse you are asking me to read, my friend, it's about being wise, not to be fooled. If a person he came to me and he want to fight with me when I was a was a young kid I used to jump to fights even I have nothing to do with them I look for it actually because you know it's a fool if, if a, a teenage foolish person but now if you want to fight with me I will not fight with you I will call the police I want to fight with you and what who is the winner <laughs> who is the winner really nobody if I beat you and you beat me who is the winner I mean, obviously, both of us are stupid. 
You know what I mean? It's obvious that both of you are stupid. You are beating each other. I mean, what, what, what for? Avoid evil. Avoid hurting others. And if others want to hurt you, use the law. Don't be evil. Unless, like you, okay, he's a threat in your life, and you have, you cannot wait for the police to defend you. Then you have to do what you need to do. But don't be a fool. You are going vacation. Somebody, you are walking in the street. Somebody hit your shoulder, and you look at him, and you look at you, and you say, "What's up?" And you say to him, "What's up?" But that's mean both of you are fool. Just say it's okay. Nice to meet you. Laugh, you know. It's okay. It's okay. It's all right. Let let go. Because nothing evil happened. I mean, this guy he don't want to hurt you. Why you are seeking a fight? Why you are trying to damage your your day? Where is your wisdom? Where is your brain? Someone is asking about Christians involved in killing. I mean, it's if it's a war, you see, in war, I was a soldier, I was in the army. If it's in war, I mean, you have no choice to shoot or not to shoot. Let me explain to you. The soldiers who hang Jesus, are they the one who made the decision to hang him? The ones who put nails in his hands? No. He's, he himself, if he did not do it, he will be killed. According to law, soldiers who run during, this is the event in the country for sure, but many countries, they practice this during wartime. If a soldier, he run away, he will be considered as a coward and he will be executed. He is betraying his army. So, war is a different story. First of all, it's not your decision. You are just a soldier. Secondly, if your nation is in risk and you are fighting to defend, not to be the aggressive, this is a different story. The Bible gives you the right to defend yourself. The Bible says, the one who lived by the sword, he died by the sword. What does that mean? It means you are carrying a sword to kill others. But sword is not the problem. Jesus said, the one who don't have a sword, go and sell your garment and buy a sword. They said to him, we have two swords. He said, that's enough. What does that mean? Enough to defend yourself, not to attack others. When the soldiers, they came to arrest Jesus, the soldier, he is just doing his order. He, he received an order to arrest this person. Peter, he wanted to defend Jesus. Jesus refused because this is just a policeman. This is not an evil man. He's a policeman. He's just doing an order. How many, how many innocent people they are in jail today, and the policeman arrest them? Is that mean the policeman is a bad person? No, he's just doing the judge order. Do you understand what I'm saying? I never rejoice evil I hope that's uh, this topic today will help many to understand and uh, to do better in their life starting with your family with your children with your neighbor with your friends at work you try to be a different person try to review what you do Try to see where is what what's wrong I'm doing. Where where is the wrong in my life? Don't just let go, you know, without reviewing because you need to correct. Always, always, we have to confess our sin, and always we have to fight it. And the best way to fight our sin is love. You see, if you love, if you love a person, you don't hurt the person. And that, if you practice that, I mean, that will, will cover everything. That will stop you from doing sin, actually. A man, he want to sleep with the women. Why he want to sleep with her? Because he want to sleep with her. As simple as that. He want to have the benefit of sexual joy. But if you love the person, you will resist that. Unless she is your wife. 
temptation can make you feel down can take you down so if you do it before well now it's time to think okay I'm not going to I'm going to fight this because if I really love a woman and I want to have a, have her in the bed to be mine then what about marrying her so he want to sleep with you but he don't want to marry you that's that's all obviously is not good so you are good for him in the bed but you are not good as a wife that's weird isn't it so we have to be careful otherwise a failure can is all over around us there is many holes in the streets money temptation all kind of temptation you name it to be yourself you know like one of the most bad things I see about people saying a great things about me actually those things hurt me they don't make me feel better because I, I feel like sometime I did not get the let us say people are not listening to what I'm trying to say I'm not here to glorify me I'm no one I'm here to help you to understand something useful for you not to say a Christian Prince you're amazing I'm not amazing who is amazing what is amazing about me focus in how you can be amazing to your family to your friends to be beautiful around people around you talk is cheap we don't want to sit here and praise each other and say you are amazing and this guy is amazing what about we do the work the work of love ask yourself Okay, now you are 30 or 40 or 50 or 70, whatever you are. How many people you brought to Christ? Did you save a, even a member of your family? Did you try to explain a verse in the Bible to your child so he will be a believer? Tomorrow he will go to the school and they will make fun of the Bible. And they will tell him that the world is created by the Big Bang. If you cannot share love of God with your child, so what is the purpose of your life? If you cannot save your child, life can be beautiful if life full of things, you know, like let's say you have icons around you and those icons of people you helped. Imagine you have a wall covered by pictures of people you are able to help during your lifetime. So if your wall today is empty, does not have one picture, well, you better start having somebody to help. And then you add pictures in your wall. I have 10, I have 15, I have 1,000, I have 10,000. One day you will stand in the front of the Lord and he will say, where is your love? Where is your love, the one you share with people, what you did? You will say, I love my car. I love my house. I love my swimming pool. Oh, I love that shoes I bought. <laughs> What a fool. We will be in September 12 in the other channel. And the topic, as I showed you, is this. How to find your purpose in life. This is the link for those who like to join us and to be with us. That topic is not about any other religion. It's about things will help us in our life. It's, if you are interested, be free to be with us. You can subscribe and you can tell your friends about it. There we don't talk about any religion. We talk only about what is good for us to be done how to find your purpose of life and as you see i chose this picture because even this person he have a purpose of life in that picture you know sometimes i like to uh, take pictures for things around me because pictures they they are full of stories 
a lot of stories there you need just to look deeply and you will see yeah don't make fun of a bigger unless he is not if somebody if somebody is homeless and because he's lazy that's not I, I will not really feel sorry for him but there is really people who need help there is really people who they are been destroyed let us say but as you see I am assuming that this person is honest he is doing his best not to be what he is but life made him what he is today even this person I believe he have a hope when he put a sign there he's still alive he would do anything and I hope only good things seeking help and here you see that even when you are really felt alone that you are left alone you are in the street you are no one you are hungry you are rejected by everybody people look at you down even there you depend on hope and you depend on love that love of others will bring something good to you and that this is why I say love is an amazing power for us as a human because it have a different value I I just came from Europe I saw people who they are big in the street but I can tell they are fake I saw in Germany a woman with no shame she have two can two cans one of them it says there's a sign it says this is for my weeds and the other one for my beer and there's people giving money that's stupid I will never give a money for such a woman imagine she is saying in the sign this is for my weeds and this is for my beer those are lazy people they are hippies love should not be stupid right that is not love that is a stupidity if you give money for those people you are stupid literally you are not a loving person yeah actually I was walking with the brother Amir you know him from Germany I was walking with him and he can he can tell you about this we were laughing I, I, I wish I took a picture for it she have two cans in the ground one of them have a sign in the front of it it says for my weeds the other one for my beer you believe it anyway I want to say guys thank you yes yeah, true story absolutely this is not Sahir Bukhari I was actually me and Amir and another brother the three of us walking in that area and we laugh about it so you know love should not make you a fool and maybe this is a good point to mention right being loving should not make you a fool because many people they would try abuse to abuse your love and take advantage of you uh, don't don't let them love is something and being a fool something else All right we have to be careful uh, yes Jameson what is your question my friend <clears throat> how I can approach a Muslim friend and family uh, be an, uh, you know be a Christian be a Christian and be truthful if they ask you say the truth Islam is false and prove it to them learn educate yourself before you speak about the topic same time present Christ in you your love to them and how good you are and how Christ he made you a good person don't be bad to them don't harm them don't be evil right uh, Jameson we don't want to talk about the Quran today you know because this is not our topic maybe you can you know you can save your question I thought your question is about something have to do with our topic so you can save your question for next time we go in here and we speak about Islam I want to keep this topic beautiful and clean you know what I mean this topic I want to keep it beautiful and clean 
again this is the link for our broadcast in the second channel if you like to join us please subscribe uh, okay they were assalamu alaikum by the way many people do not know that salamu alaikum have nothing to do with Islam this is a Christian Jewish greeting how many of you remember what the angels they say to Mary when they come to her this is a theft this is a theft stolen from this man who claimed to be prophet and he make it as his own this is us this is our greeting Shalom to you Mary So assalamu alaikum is not an Islamic greeting. This is a Christian greeting. Peace to you. Shalom. All right. And this is, by the way, one of the reasons to believe Muhammad is a false prophet. Why? When the angel, according to Muslims, he came to Muhammad, he did not say to him shalom. Even in Muhammad's story, not even single time. Why? Because this is not an angel of God. He did not say the word shalom. No peace. For he is not coming from the peace. Peace is the Lord. All right. So anyway, I want to say thank you for being here. And as you see today, we don't have uh, too many, only 1,000 something watching because the topic People they like fighting people they like to see Christian Prince in the stage, you know You know, I mean I understand but this is a very important video actually I advise you to uh, uh, Read this verse we mentioned to you and take a look at your life and try to fix things you have and me myself I do that too. I don't think I am a perfect person. I do I commit sin. I do mistakes Sometimes, you know, I'm, you might hurt somebody, you know, so you have to review your life from time to time this is very very good for you very very healthy for you like you know uh, let us say you are going you you have you, you want to go somewhere and you want to arrive to that place like you cannot wait to be there but still you have to take a break Check your car if the oil is not good. Check the check the gas. Check the check the it breaks. You know you, you have you have to do what is called health care for your trip. So your healthy life is very important in order to arrive to that destination. We have to stop and take a break from time to time and review our life and see what I'm doing wrong. What I'm doing right. Oh, today my family is so happy. What I did, what I said to my wife, what made her happy. Same for you as a lady. So try always to bring happiness to your life. You see, there's something is called the art of living and the art of dying. Art of dying is you doing things will make others upset and hurt them. Just to be to be you yourself happy somehow for a moment. That is art of dying. Art of living is to do things to make others happy, and they do things to make you happy. At the end, all of us we are happy. That is a beautiful family. Imagine you have a wife. When she wanna cook, oh my husband don't like this. I'm not going to cook it, even I like it. And then you have a husband, he says, why you don't cook that food? Oh, you don't like it. It's okay. Cook it. See, he think about you. You think about him. That is beautiful. That is love. That is not something temporarily. For always you think about each other, how I can be good to this person and good will come back to me. Life can be either beautiful or disgusting. So choose what you like to be. It's your choice. I want to say thank you guys for being here. May the Lord bless you. And if I can go live on air again today, I will. If not, I will see you again 
uh, we will be in uh, in the other channel and we will have a topic it's called the purpose of life you can feel free to join us it's going to be September 12 which means in two days from now so take a note you can check the link and see the timing and you know be happy to have you with us so I want to say thank you I pray to the Lord he will open your you know our eyes all of us he will guide us by his love and his mercy and remember love never fails people fail but not love with this with the wisdom of the Lord I leave you in peace Christ is Lord anything else is false thank you very much take care